let the word go forth to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. And that torch had indeed passed to 43-year-old John Fitzgerald Kennedy. He was the youngest ever U.S. president and also the first Catholic to be elected to the White House. So, what did this mean for America? How did Kennedy defeat Nixon in 1960? And was this famous victory entirely above board? I'm joined by Ryan Tuberty, author of JFK in Ireland, Four Days That Changed a President, which will arrive in bookshops this week. And uh, he's brought a copy in, and very, very handsome indeed it looks too. And also Colleen Duby, who's the executive director of the Fulbright Commission in Ireland and a student of Irish and American history. Colleen, starting with you, just how different were these two? two men personally and politically. It's quite fascinating going back into the the history. First off, one was a Democrat and one was a Republican. Kennedy, as we probably all know, was the Democrat and uh, Nixon was the Republican. But quite interestingly, they they both came from different sides of America. Uh, Kennedy from, well, Boston and New York from a very, as as we know, Irish Catholic family. Kennedy, or Nixon, interestingly, came from California Quakers. Um, They were both educated to a certain extent privately, but not in the upper echelons of American prep schools. Quite interestingly, Kennedy actually went to Choate, which would be kind of a second tier American prep school, Andover and Phillips being the premier one. And he was known as a bit of a mucker. He was a bit of a, I suppose, stirrer of the pot and some things don't change. But but it, quite interestingly, Nixon himself. So they, while they came from very different, both, I suppose, family stock, both came from very different religious backgrounds, different, completely different parts of, of America. They actually shared some, some political views themselves and they were outsiders they were outsiders to their parties um, they were outsiders um, you know to a certain extent to, the, to their upbringing and co- what I found absolutely fascinating going back into this and forgetting it they were actually friends to a certain extent which mm. and that that picture completely changed uh, once they they arrived in Washington and Ryan I think the title of your first chapter of the book sums up the, the man Kennedy the Kennedys from poverty to power yeah. JFK never really experienced poverty no you're absolutely right and, and the great story the reason I love the Kennedy story is that it started in, in in such horrible circumstances. It was 1848. The Kennedy, I uh, suppose, the original man left the the, the kind of famine-stricken Ireland and left Wexford Harbour, Wexford Harbour, as it would become known <laughs> as later, and heads across the Atlantic, the bowl of a bitter bowl of tears, and and into uh, to Boston. Poverty, pigs, dogs, they were called. I mean, it couldn't have been worse, their story. Uh, and yet, they did something very clever. Uh, they didn't drink. And, and, and not, like, not unlike the Family Guy sketch, which showed Ireland without booze as a kind of haven of scientific discovery and an amazing uh, invention. Uh, but uh, the, the Kennedys stayed there in Boston, worked their way up from uh, as Coopers, barmen, and so forth. Uh, and married about themselves a couple of times, just a little bit. Uh, tried to shake the whole Irish thing. It was getting on their nerves. Famously, Joseph P. Kennedy kept, looked at the papers one morning and said, here he is, Irishman Joseph P. Kennedy. What does a, ma- a man have to do around here to become a bloody American? Um, and ultimately, then a couple of generations on the White House, the most powerful mm. uh, office on the planet Earth. Extraordinary. And tell me, Colleen, how did the two men secure the nominations of their parties? Nixon really was the only contender. Uh, Rockefeller, who was governor of New York, he was vice president. He was vice president. He he had been. He was favored. He had served as as, um, General Eisenhower's vice president for two terms. He actually acted as president when Eisenhower was debilitated by heart attack. So he was seen as as the main contender. But still, to a certain extent, uh, had to wait till Rockefeller, who was the time governor of New York, pulled out of 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 the, the nomination process. As did Barry Goldwater. So. Nixon, to a certain extent, was a shoe in Kennedy, on the other hand, was not. Um, the, the old party bosses were not too keen on him. He was too young. He was too inexperienced. Um, Eleanor Roosevelt spent most of her time trying to keep him out of the nomination. So he very interestingly said, right, and as Ryan spent, the Kennedys were of the view, and Rose Kennedy in particular, that you make life happen. You make yeah. things happen. So he went out and completely changed the process and, pro- and got involved in the primaries and proved to the party bosses that he was going to win. So seven of the primaries that he contested, he won. Um, He crisscrossed the country and, you know, was going to prove to very special interest as well as to the party that he was he was in for the long haul. I think, sorry for Mary Moyles, uh, I think that Colin's point is it was so well made when she described both men as outsiders. I think when you look at Kennedy was was Irish and Catholic. And in fact, you know, having done a bit of homework on it, it seems that Irishness wasn't the problem. There are Mm -hmm. many presidents 
residents had been of Irish extraction. It was his Catholicism that was clearly the problem. And equally with with um, Richard Nixon, for his party, it was more to, the, to, to do with the fact that he was kind of poor. He wasn't one of these wealthy Republican mm. uh, waspy types. He was, he was a man of not many means. Uh, and also the fact that he was a Quaker wouldn't have helped his case. Eisenhower wouldn't have been Nixon's greatest fan. I think at one point um, in midway through Eisenhower... Eisenhower was asked what decisions, if any, Nixon had made and sort of he scratched his head and yeah. said, mm, give me I'll week, get back I'll to you. Yeah. Give me a week, <laughs> give me a week and I'll try something. And, and equally, you know, Eisenhower, I always got the impression reading uh, about Eisenhower's relationship with Nixon, Nixon was kind of like the son-in-law that the father-in-law doesn't really like, but it kind of has him foisted upon him. And, and equally, then well, you at had... at one point, well, coming yes. into the second uh, term, uh, Eisenhower actually said to Nixon, you should consider another line of work. Yeah. Um, which... But he couldn't sh- shake him. No. And, e- and equally, Kennedy then, you know, Truman didn't like Kennedy. Mm-hmm. And, and Truman, uh, Truman, I think, at one point said that sometimes... And, and this was interesting, because I spoke to Robert Dalek, the author of uh, Unfinished Life and Other Stories, the historian, about this, that, that Truman had said, he's too young. And he's not ready for it yet. And we were talking about the echo in history that we saw about Barack Obama, who was considered too young, not ready for it. And in a way, Kennedy was too too Irish, too Catholic. Uh, Obama, too black, too young, etc., etc. It's interesting uh, parallels. Now, the issues of the campaign were the Cold War, Southeast Asia, Cuba, three Republican recessions, education, civil rights, rights, the US image abroad. But uh, during the first televised debate between Kennedy and Nixon, the other issue, one of the other issues you talked about, not as Catholicism, but uh, the issue was raised uh, by the Republican candidate of Kennedy's youth and his legislative inexperience. And this is how JFK responded. The Vice President and I came to the Congress together. I've been there now for 14 years, the same period of time that he has, so that our experience in uh, government is comparable. I come out of the Democratic Party, which in this century has produced Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman, and which supported and sustained these programs which I've discussed tonight. I think Mr. Nixon is an effective leader of his party. I hope he would grant me the same. The question before us is, which point of view and which party do we want to lead the United States? How about the Catholicism, Ryan? How did he put that particular oh, it, it one It was a bed? stroke of genius, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, he went to Houston and he, he addressed a bunch of, uh, g- a gathering of Protestant ministers and he said, this is about being uh, the President of the United States, not about being the Catholic President of, of anything, or words t- to that effect. And in the same way, Obama w- addressed the, the issue with the Reverend racist, White, yeah. right? And, and he went and said, look, let's get this straight. I want to be a, a, the President of America, not the black President of America, the, or the first you know, woman President, whatever it might be. So that was good. I think that what's interesting listening to that clip is Nixon and Kennedy were great communicators for all the the, the whatever his, history treated Nixon as, as whatever treatment he got. It should be remembered his checker speech was it's classic. It was a classic. You know, anyone explain the checker well, speech I mean, briefly. It, it, I let Colin do that, but other than, other than to say before I let you do yeah. it is to say that anyone who hasn't seen it, YouTube it immediately yeah. after mm-hmm. this program because you, it, and just watch it. it you'd never get away with it now, but it was if you want to set it up. Colin, well, coming back to the humble origins, there was an allegation that Nixon had had taken illegal illegal funds and like that the party bosses were all apoplectic about this. You know, you have to go out and you defend yourself. No, yeah. don't defend yourself. Ultimately, Nixon, who was a man of incredible integrity, said. I will, went on national television and basically said, I came to Washington with nothing. I live in this suburban duplex with my wife who doesn't have a fur coat. The only thing we have that gives us solace is our dog. And Checkers. that was a campaign donation, apparently, that he wasn't going yeah. to give back. The only exactly. thing I want to declare is my little dog, and, Checkers. And <laughs> as, as Ryan said, there was this, this humbleness about Nixon to the point where he was actually almost too humble and he, he had too much integrity and yeah. didn't think that Kennedy um, was going to be nasty in, in the fight and actually underestimated Kennedy quite well, a and, lot and that in, all, I in think the process. Precisely. And I think that all changed when it, the, the debates were televised, as we know. And okay, tell me about, well, I, I, talk I about the importance of the I debates. I think that for, for a lot of people, I mean, th- a lot of what I say has been said before, but I'll just repeat it. Uh, people felt that those at home listening to the debates mm. felt it was a hands-down win for Nixon yeah. that because the substance was so strong and, and the quality of his debating ability were, was, was enough to bring him over the line to use the expression. Those watching it, saw a guy who looked like he was on temporary release 
from uh, a, an institution of some description, yeah. which in many ways he was as vice president, but he was all, kind of unshaven. Uh, people have said uh, subsequently that the heat was turned up in the studios that he couldn't have, he was sweating. And then there's that scene, if, again, if you want to YouTube yeah. this, watch him in the, during the, he has the most incredibly shifty eyes yeah. I've ever seen on a politician of any generation. He's looking around, go, looking that, left and right, up and down. That clip that we played, there's a cutaway yeah. to Nixon and you can actually see the sweat, the sweat on, on his, his chin, chin. Right. which I've never actually noticed. Really and then go left and, and then pan camera left to to to, pre, to to senator the senator from Massachusetts who looks like he was he was carved out of Hollywood central casting. Uh, he's got the obviously in black and white you can't see it as much, but clearly you can see he was a man who's healthy even despite yeah. everything for a uh, moment. But anyway. he looked it. He was yeah. but he was propped up for the night. The hair was good. The eyes was good. His his ability to to speak was good, and also his oratory, as we now know, uh, because it's it's been it's uh, it's it survived history, was in a class of its own, and and he won the television. It changed everything. But he didn't play fair. Because the interesting thing about the debates, and coming back to sort of in, in, Nixon, in that they had agreed actually the debate was meant to be about domestic policy, and within the first thirty seconds, uh, Kennedy had had shifted it to foreign policy, and and throughout it, um, you know, Nixon came in on the back foot. He a lot of people don't know, um, he actually had spent three weeks in hospital prior to the, the debate um, due to a knee injury and he, he, as everyone said, he looked awful and mm. it, it set up the, the whole importance of, of the image, what we now know in terms of the personality politics uh, and even though there were three more debates two of which were televised, one was by radio um, Nixon never recovered mm. from that, there were 80 Kennedy million went ahead in the polls and yeah, stayed ahead basically. Three, three by three points Text us on 51551 you can call us on 185715 150. Uh, email us history at rte.ie and you can follow us on Twitter at RTE History Show. Now, in the tightest race of the century, the question has to be asked Did Daddy, Joe Kennedy, steal the election by doing a deal with the devil in the form of Mayor Richard Daly of Chicago? What's the truth and what is the myth about the Cook County Chicago vote? The myth is that the Kennedys, by stealth and wealth, bought the election, uh, both in terms of election fraud in Illinois as well as in Texas because Kennedy's running mate was Lyndon B. Johnson. He was kind of the, the, the southern, the Dixiecrat vote that came in from, from, from Texas. That's the myth we all know. It's, it's something that has gone down in his Going back into the, the history, there is recent um, academic uh, uh, research that, that looked at the Illinois campaign and, to be honest, could not prove it, could not prove the Republicans' um, allegations of it, even uh, yeah, allowing for all the I'm because not because want because to believe I think it. that the most pertinent question to, to, to this is, is uh, the answer to this question is another question. Who cares? The reality is he won the election. A win's a win's a win. Yeah. Now, uh, as to But I think the interesting thing looking George W. Bush, by the way, hmm. would probably text in now to agree, yeah. uh, but <laughs> the point I'm making is that you know it's so moot as to yeah. be almost most irrelevant. But the decisive issues were not were not voter fraud, and and the decisive issues from from my perspective, re looking at it, came down to kind of the the civil rights vote as well as the Catholic vote. It's the one time really in mass the Catholics voted. It was the last time it was kind of a reliable block vote, but. I think one of the decisive elements was the fact that um, and Kennedy actually when Martin Luther King was arrested uh, three weeks before the, the actual election and both candidates were hemming and hawing, will we ring Coretta Scott King, his, his wife, to kind of extend our sympathies to see what we can do to get this overturned? Only Kennedy rang. Um, and which, and then Martin Luther King's father published a pamphlet which literally brought um, the black and civil rights, pro-civil rights vote over to the Kennedy camp, even though most of them were not of the Catholic persuasion and suspicious of, of, of him. Um, and that was one of the big decisive elements, not so much the fraud and conspiracy elements. Just mm-hmm. skip, I want to skip forward with you, sure. Ryan, just to, uh, something about the book, because mm-hmm. uh, there's a huge irony in the visit in 1963 to Ireland, because... Everybody's vised against it. He seems to be the only person who wants to actually do it. Yeah, well, you see, I was talking to Ted Sorensen, who's, of course, his, his mm. uh, White House counsel and, and one of the last living, very, very real members of the, 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 the Murphy, as the man, Jackie, yeah. Jack yeah. O'Nassie. The man who wrote oh, Profiles in Courage. Right, uh, or at least uh, helped, helped out uh, in a great right way. Uh, it said that uh, he felt that the president was entitled to a few days of self-indulgence, if you like, uh, on the, at the end of, uh, or at least in the middle of, a European tour. Um, uh, Kennedy himself, the, the, the intriguing element of, of it was that this was a build-up. As soon as Kennedy got to the White House, the Irish uh, government, through the, the good offices of the Foreign Affairs and into the, the ambassador, T.J. Kiernan, in Washington, 
were playing what was what could be described as a dating game or a mating game, if you like, trying to get him over over here. So there's great uh, moments and great documents in the archives trying trying to get him here. The bottom line is, he took the the president took the ambassador out onto the veranda uh, outside the Oval Office one day, and he he told his chief of protocol, uh, he said, "Stay where you are. I want to see this guy on my own." And took him inside. He said, "I'm coming to Ireland." Uh, find a good reason for me to have to come to Ireland, but I'm coming. So they discussed, should they make him an honorary citizen? Not allowed. If you're the president of America, you're a citizen of America. You can't be a citizen of anywhere else. And yet, this quote, which I always think is amazing, because I don't think a lot of people give it the, 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 the relevance it deserves, uh, the credit or the weight it deserves. He says, he said in Limerick on the 29th of June, I've put it on the back of the book, this is not the land of my birth, he said, of Ireland, uh, but it is the land for which I hold the greatest affection. You know, when you're the president in the United States, that's quite a big statement. Uh, he wanted to come home. I think that part of it was what they call the sentimental journey. Uh, but uh, I think he had, a, as, as I explain throughout the book he has a deep interest in the country but as, with every day he was here mm. I think that interest and uh, fondness got, grew substantially Colleen would the America in which you grew up have been different if Nixon had won I mean somebody Ronan Mayfield wants, to, wants me to ask do you think do either of you think Kennedy was the same as Nixon in policy terms so was it any different I don't there are some events that I don't think would have changed um, under Nixon. I think Vietnam would have happened. Um, both of them were pretty allied. In Maybe their, quicker. Uh, probably a bit quicker, but they would have definitely realised the importance of it. I think what have, what would have been different, Kennedy did leave a legacy, and I think it's it for me it's fascinating because unless you're an American historian or you have a love of a lot of these true American values, you don't realise the importance of what we now know of as active citizenship. Kennedy was obsessed with the image of America abroad mm. and said about setting up the Peace Corps, he really did not have a huge amount of time um, for the US Department of State in terms of what a lot of the diplomats did. So I think that that is an element which would not exist and be there for even Obama to resurrect, the, that importance of responsibilities which came, which came out in Kennedy's speech. Could, could I suggest that I think that there, it would have been a very different America mm. under Nixon. I think that uh, Kennedy was a president of peace. I know that mm. Cuba aside, uh, I think that he was somebody who gave some extraordinary speeches about peace and, and wanting to, to not be... He's a guy who had first-hand combat. As you know, he was a war mm. hero in World War II. I think Kennedy, uh, Nixon was a man of war, and that was proven uh, with the people he surrounded himself by, Nick Kissinger, etc. There okay. would have been no Watergate. Um, our phone number, by the way, has migrated. We're now on 1857 uh, we've been getting in lots of texts, though, and let me just bring some of those to you. Um, somebody, Frank, in Dublin says, I have a comedy album, a JFK comedy album. Brilliant. First Family, recorded by Vaughn Meader. Vaughn Meader is one yeah. of the, he's, he's a guy who used to make a living out of imitating. He's what like a scrap Saturday. What happened to JFK the musical? Did anybody ever see it? that yeah, in the, the one world <laughs> premiere it was, it performance? It was in the Olympia Theatre, <laughs> and I, I lost the will to live when I saw <laughs> uh, Joseph P. Kennedy, the dad, singing his way through a stroke, <laughs> and landing God. on the chair, trying to sing out the side of his mouth, and I thought, this is not... <laughs> Good enough. I'm out of here. Okay, Paul and Nina says, though Jack certainly framed the debate in US politics in the 60s, his brother Ted's influence could be seen as the far greater legacy through his work in the Senate. Good point. And um, African Americans believed in Kennedy, even though Kennedy didn't always deserve it. In the end, however, he did deliver. Nixon, while favouring civil rights, would not have won over African Americans. Interestingly, African Americans were concerned Johnson would not follow through on civil rights, but he Which did, he did yeah. and burnished and the legacy of But Camelot. also uh, Henry Gab- Cabot Lodge. John uh, Cabot Lodge that was um, Nixon's running mate kind of shot the campaign in the foot when he made the premature promise that if they if the Republicans were elected they were going to put a black American into cabinet which okay. well, It was all underway 50 years ago this year just as there is another vitally important election underway in the US at the moment perhaps not as important as the election is going to be underway two big years one, from now. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. Uh, Ryan's book JFK in Ireland Four Days That Changed a President is published by HarperCollins. The TV documentary JFK A Homecoming is on RTE one at half past nine tomorrow night. Ryan and Colleen, thank you both very much. Hey, Miles, good luck with the new yeah. program. I oh, love thank you. Thank you, Miles. Life history on a Sunday night. It's tremendous. Thank you very yeah, much for kicking off the yeah, history show. Delighted to be here.